Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to do a short video explaining um, the difference with, with when someone uses good words and fair speeches, a double-minded man, and in the comment section. Um, and I'll be blocking this person because he's. I've been told by other brethren that had made some videos, some that only made a couple videos, that he goes on there and he starts spamming a lot. So this is what I normally do when I see a comment and someone makes a comment like this. So let's read the comment. Getting saved through godly sorrow is great, but, he uses that word but. When you use the word but, it negates everything he said before. So he doesn't really mean it. The stuff before he doesn't mean it. But we should stick to the biblical teaching. And this was under my video, Gospel Track Ministry, um, when I mentioned that repentance leads to salvation. It's part of the plan of salvation to find God's grace. Right? I've always said this, brothers and sisters in Christ, True salvation in any dispensation has been God saving man by his grace. It's that simple. God does the saving. Right? Remember that. Okay. Okay. We should stick with biblical teaching that whosoever believes in Jesus is saved. Having godly sorrow is not a requirement, but it can lead to salvation as 2 Corinthians 7.10 teaches. What is 2 Corinthians 7.10? So, 2 Corinthians 7.10. Uh, let's see if we can enlarge this a little bit more. I already know what it says, but let's go here. 2 Corinthians. I'm bad with the addresses. 7.10. What well, we see here where it says, For godly sorrow. Looking on the screen. Make it a little bit bigger. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. What's the death here it's talking about? Well, people like to grab this verse and use it for instruction in righteousness today, brothers and sisters in Christ by saying it works in the life of a Christian, but in context here it's talking about for the wages of sin is death, hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, the wages of sin is death. You sin once, you go to hell. Okay, so when we get over here, that's what that's talking about. It's talking about salvation as far as going to heaven versus going to hell. For the sorrows of the world worketh death. The wages of sin is death. The, law, the letter killeth. You know, the laws are schoolmaster brings to price because it lets us know that we're under the law of sin and death. Um, uh, for the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Okay. That is what the it's talking about when it says godly sorrow works with repentance to salvation. Salvation there is talking about God saving man by his grace, not in the life of a Christian. I'm getting ahead of myself. But notice he says it can lead you to salvation. Okay. I just respond with 2 Corinthians 4.3, but if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. I've always preached this. To find that gift, God's grace, you have to be seeking it. Okay. There's a plan. There's steps that God says. He has instructions. You have to follow the instructions to find his grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. Not faith are you saved through grace. It's by grace. Through faith, you have to go through something to find God's grace. Repentance is the first step. Belief is the second step. Confession is the third step. Prayer is part of confession, but asking God to save you is the final step, because who does the saving? God does. Okay. I put, you will never find salvation without going through repentance. What is salvation? God's grace. Not the gospel. I didn't say you wouldn't find the gospel without going through repentance. You will not find God's grace without going through repentance. 2 Corinthians, and I quoted 2 Corinthians. I actually quoted out for him, but I know the sorrows of the world worketh death. 
hell. And the number one reason people won't get saved, including this person here, this Jimmy 02468, is because he has sorrows of the world. He loves his sin. He doesn't want to give up his sin. I don't have to give up my sin. I don't even have to have godly sorrow for sin. I'm getting ahead of myself. Look at his response. Okay. Oops. This thing doesn't always try to keep it towards the top. I don't believe that salvation is an emotional experience. In other words, you don't have to have godly sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against him. You don't have to have that. It's all about what Jesus did for us and not what we did to him. So let me get this straight. Because of my sins, personal sins, not that I'm just generally a sinner like everybody else, but because of my personal sins, Jesus was beaten beyond recognition, had his beard ripped out, a crown of thorns platted on his head and hit. He was whipped. You know, stripes, through by his stripes we are healed. And he was nailed to a cross where he died because of my personal sins. And that has nothing to do with salvation, finding God's grace. It's not what scripture says. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. All right. So he just did a 180. First he said up here, it can lead to salvation. Now he's saying down here, it doesn't lead to salvation at all. He's doing a 180. I don't believe that salvation is an emotional experience. It's about what Jesus did for us, not what we did to him. It's about both. All right. uh, are you saying that the blood of Jesus doesn't have enough power to save you if you go if you don't go through an emotional experience? See how he does a straw man? Um, what does Paul say about the gospel? How about we go to scripture? What does Paul say about this gospel? Right there. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood that was shed on the cross. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. In other words, it leads to salvation. It doesn't save you. It leads to who saving you? God, Jesus Christ, who is God. All right, that's what the scriptures say. But he's trying to say, well, the blood doesn't have enough power to save you. Uh, Bible says you've got to come to the cross. Bible says you have to deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow him. That's a Christian. We have to deny ourselves. He's not denying himself. He's saying, I've earned it with my belief. I've earned it. I don't have to do anything. Like, I don't have to change my life after salvation. When the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. It's a condition. If you're not a new creature, you're not in Christ. You're a false convert, like this person is. Right? And then he does a whole 180 on what he, his view of 2 Corinthians 7.10. I don't think he did a 180. I think what he did was he lied to me and deceived me, trying to get me to turn my back on the Word of God. Right? What the scriptures say. So he says, I think you took 2 Corinthians 7.10 out of context because it... In context, it's talking about the situation of the church. In the Bible, salvation doesn't always mean salvation from hell. Right? Just like the Bible says, she shall be saved in childbearing in 1 Timothy 2.15. That doesn't mean that childbearing saves you from hell. It's not talking about spiritual salvation. Well, let's turn to 1 Timothy 2.15. Sometimes they prey on your laziness, brothers and sisters in Christ. They don't want you looking stuff up. Okay. I think I got the wrong address. First uh, Timothy two fifteen. Am I in first or second? Yeah, first Timothy two fifteen. Here it is. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in the faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Where is the word salvation in that sentence at all? Remember. Part of this ministry, brothers and sisters of Christ, is to encourage you that words have meaning. God chooses words for a reason, okay? Now it says that they continue in the faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. It's talking about, you know, being saved and childbearing in this life. 
Okay, I understand that. But the word salvation is not there yet. He's trying to equate salvation with just being saved from childbearing. Okay, God's grace is there, absolutely. But once again, you get people that can't handle words have meaning. Okay, salvation's not, the word salvation's not there. Right. Now, he goes, I believe 2 Corinthians 7.10 is talking about the salvation of the church from all the trouble that the church was heading towards because of the serious sins they were going on. No, not, not, pardon me. I apologize. That is not what it's talking about. Okay, where it says the trouble that the church was heading towards. No, it's the trouble that the church was in. They were so carnal, the Corinthians were so carnal, that Paul was doubting their salvation. Okay. Here's 1 Corinthians. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an executioner or extortioner, I'm sorry, with such a one know not eat. Okay. Bottom line, you go through there, uh, check whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Okay. Yeah, he's telling them, you guys are so sinful and so wicked, there's no changed life. No new creature in Christ Jesus. He questions their salvation, questions their salvation. He even goes as far as to quote, he preaches the gospel to them again in 2 Corinthians 15. He preaches the gospel to them again. That's how bad they are. Okay, It wasn't that they were heading towards, he doubted their salvation. He looked at him and said, there's no repentance. Where's the repentance that comes at before salvation, that leads to salvation? Where is it? It continues. It starts before salvation and continues all through the life of a Christian. He's like, where is it? It's not there. They love their sin. They want to call themselves Christians and be part of the world at the same time. They won't quote those verses to you. All right? Now here's the famous verse that he, he will keep quoting left and right. It says, if, if believing in Jesus Christ, Jesus doesn't give you, I'm sorry, if believing in Jesus doesn't give you each everlasting life, why did Jesus say, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life? John 6, 47. Was he lying? You know how he's trying to guilt trip me now? Get me to try to call Jesus a liar? I ain't going to call Jesus a liar. John 6, 47. Here's my first question I would ask. Is that the Old Testament or the New Testament? John 6, 47. Here it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Okay, and he talks about your fathers. Who's he addressing? The Jewish people. When's this written? Old Testament. Has Jesus died, was buried, and rose again the third day? No. What was Jesus preaching that you had to believe in when he said, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life? Well, first, let's go to John. What was John preaching? Well, here they are both side by side. We'll keep it. John Matthew 3 2 says, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the gospel that was being preached, the kingdom of heaven. And you still had to repent back then, coming to God broken, having godly sorrow for sinning against him. So you say, Well, that's just John. Well, what about Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, when John gets imprisoned? From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What's the kingdom of heaven? Oops, that's what the... Oops. 
sometimes you gotta here it is. Matthew eleven twelve. And from that day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay? The kingdom, the belief that he was saying, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life, is when he asked Peter, Whom ye say that I am? Okay? He says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. They had to believe that he was God, manifest in the flesh. He was the Christ. He was their king. He was there to bring in a thousand-year reign. He was there to rule and reign as their king. That's the belief that it's talking about here. It's not talking about death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? He's grabbing from this verse. Was he lying? No, but he is. Jimmy 02468. He's lying and he's being deceptive and deceiving. Good words and fair speeches, as the Bible says, deceive the hearts of the simple. Someone will read that and go, that has been taught dispensational teaching and say, well, it says that in the Bible, that's got to be it, right? But he doesn't grab from the New Testament. He grabs from the Old. I put down James 1.8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And he is. Okay? If he's trying to grab from two different dispensations and claim they're, they're one dispensation, it's double-minded. Okay? Because they're going to be contrary. Salvation is the same. It's always been God saving man by his grace. But he's also a double-minded man because in the top there he says you can get saved by, sal uh, by repentance. You can get saved by godly sorrow. And then he turns around and says you can't. That's a double-minded man. You say one thing and then you say another. That's a double-minded man. And he goes down here to say, Are you just trying to make me look bad and yourself look good rather than saying anything worthwhile? I don't have to make him look bad. He made himself look bad. He didn't quote New Testament. And when you do quote New Testament, the Pauline epistles, you've got people that attack Paul. Okay, you have certain groups that will just flat out attack Paul. Oh, you follow Paul, I follow Jesus. Paul followed Jesus. He was commanded by Jesus. He had the Holy Spirit in him and spoke as the Holy Spirit gave him utterance. All right. So this guy, he says he said his piece. You think he's done? Nope. Another st video. Be careful of the wrong tears. He puts down, I didn't deserve my salvation because I didn't repent of my sins. Here's what they're doing, brother and sister Christ. We've proven to them that they've, they, they try to say that repentance is a work. That we are saying that repentance saves you. I've never preached that, brother and sister Christ. Repentance does not save you. Okay. Then they turn around and say their belief saves them. It's only believe, it's only believe. Their belief saves them. They do the same thing they claim we're doing when we're not. It's a straw man argument. They say that we say repentance saves you, that we say prayer saves you. So but when we say that, if we were saying that, they would be right. That would be saying that we're trying to preach works. I do not preach that repentance saves you or prayer saves you. Okay? They preach that their belief saves them. They turn faith into works. That's why I always say when it says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance. I'm sorry. For by grace are ye saved through faith. I always switch it around because that's what they're doing. I'm saying they switch it around. That's why I always say that. I don't do it, but I'm saying they switch it around and say it's through faith are you saved. I mean, you're saved by your faith through God's grace. If I can say it right. It's early this morning. All right? They switch around. They turn faith into works. So what he's really saying here is he's, it sounds like he's mocking the Word of God. He thinks he's mocking me, but he's actually mocking the Word of God. Okay? Repentance doesn't save you. It leads to salvation. I always say it's like having a treasure map. The ultimate treasure that any man on this earth can have is what? God's grace. It's a treasure map that tells you how to find X, how to find God's grace. And it gives you steps. Go north for 30 steps. Go south for 30 steps. Go between it. You know, I'm looking at the map part. But in the Bible it says you have to go through repentance. It leads to salvation. You've got to go through belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation. Okay? You have to confess both in prayer. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There are steps that lead to salvation. There are, just, there are uh, directions that God gives us in His Word how to find His grace 
in this dispensation, from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ, what we call the church age. Those are the instructions for today. Back then, with what he's quoting, that wasn't how you found God's grace. Right? So he's basically mocking the word of God, thinking he's mocking me, but he's mocking the word of God. Right? You don't earn salvation with repentance. He claims he's earned it with his belief. You don't earn salvation with your belief. You don't earn salvation with confession. The last part in the plan of salvation is you ask God to save you. Call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. God does the saving. That's how you know you didn't earn it. Because God saved me. I didn't save myself. I'm not going to say belief alone. I'm not going to say repentance alone or confession alone. I did not earn salvation. It was a gift. But this guy's earned it. He loves his sin. I just linked the same thing I did because these guys, they can't handle it. So I just linked the same thing I did on the other comment section, you know. 2 Corinthians 4.3, but the gospel will be hid. It's hid to them that are lost. You'll never find salvation, God's grace, without going through repentance. And I quoted 2 Corinthians 7.10 again, and I linked the gospel message again. And here's his response. If believing on the Lord Jesus Christ does not give you everlasting life, then what do you do with John 6.47? He comes back with John 6.47 again. That's Old Testament. And that belief wasn't death, burial, and resurrection. It was to believe that he was their king, that he's God manifest in the flesh, and he's the Christ, he's the son of the living God, he's their king, he's there to rule and reign for a thousand years. That's what that belief is. If you don't believe that I am he, that he's God manifest in the flesh. That's what the belief was. It wasn't death, burial, and resurrection. He hadn't died yet. But that's what he's holding on to because he can't handle Scripture. Comparing Scripture with Scripture, that's one thing he can't handle. The second thing this person can't handle is rightly dividing. 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Jesus flat out says, He that believeth on me hath, has everlasting life. God is not a liar. There he is trying to guilt trip again. Because if you deny this, you're denying it saying God's a liar. I'm not denying it. I just know it's not written to us. It's written to the Jewish people. When Jesus was still physically walking on the earth, he was offering the kingdom to the Jewish people. He wasn't lying. But I'm not going to twist it and try to say it applies to today, like he is. If you don't answer this, I'm, I'm going to assume that you don't have an answer. See, this is another thing that they'll try to guilt trip you, brother and sister Christ, to get you to argue, to get you into debating. They'll use this tactic. Well, if you don't answer this, I'm going to assume that you don't have an answer. Just because you don't want to answer these people, because it's been answered a million times over, they'll make it out like you're automatically wrong if you don't answer. You don't have to answer these people. My answer to these people ultimately is this. Oops, not highlighting. Right there. Preach the gospel to them. The plan of salvation. Okay, I always got to keep correcting myself. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, what he went through before he died and on the cross. And the death, burial, and resurrection. How he died and rose again the third day. All right? That's the gospel. But the plan of salvation is what you need to preach to them. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Use scripture when you're quoting, or you can do a link to a video, or you can quote scripture to him when it comes to the plan of salvation. That's all you can do. He wants nothing to do with the real Jesus Christ of scripture. He doesn't. Because the real Jesus Christ of scripture has a zero tolerance for sin. All sin is negative. All right? He'll forgive people of their sins, absolutely. But he's not okay with sin. His Jesus Christ is okay with sin. It's just believe. Just believe. That's okay. It's no big deal. Just all you do is believe, and you're in. Okay? So they'll always try to do this. Okay? They'll try to get you into debating, and what they do is they're waiting for you to make a mistake, and when you make a mistake, that's when they go in. And they just hold on to that mistake. They don't care about anything else you said, and they're going to try to pull as many people away from the King James Bible 
God's perfect written word is possible. They're going to try, those who won't let go of it, they're going to try to mess you up. Okay, so you get confused about what God's word says. All right. Now, Brother Matthew M. here put in, does believing on Jesus save you? I think that's a video that Brother Brian did. Yeah, good study. All right. Bottom line, God's the one that does the saving. Uh, on the video I did, Trust Your Heart or the Word of God, he puts in, I trust the Word of God when Jesus said, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. He doesn't trust the Word of God. It's a lie. Okay, brothers and sisters of Christ, that's a flat-out lie. Because if he trusted the Word of God, he would trust where it says, Confession is made unto salvation. He would trust the Word of God when it says, Godly sorrow worketh uh, repentance to salvation. Okay? Not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. He would trust the word of God when it comes to the plan of salvation in this dispensation and the Pauline epistles. But he doesn't. Okay, He claims to trust the word of God. He's a liar. He doesn't trust the word of God. He picks and chooses what he wants. He takes things out of context. He takes things out of a different, different dispensation and tries to apply it to today. All right. So I just want to do this video. Um, this guy, when he comes on here, he's here to confuse people. So what do you do with people like that? You block them. When, if someone comes on and disagrees with me, brothers and sisters in Christ, that's fine. They show scriptures. I kind of believe, I don't care if it's something as simple as, as the flat earth versus the round earth. You know, it's not major doctrine. It's not, you know, a salvation issue where the doctrine changes who Jesus is. It doesn't. Whether Jesus created a round earth or Jesus created a flat earth. I mean, a sphere earth, because they say it's round and flat. Um, a sphere earth or a flat earth doesn't matter. Jesus still created all things. It doesn't change who Jesus is. All right? But they come on and want to say, well, I believe this, throw some verses, and then I say I believe that, and I throw some... There's nothing wrong with disagreements. I understand that. But when it comes to major doctrine, when it comes to the gospel, the plan of salvation, bottom line, when it comes to my Jesus, which is the real Jesus based off Scripture, my Lord and Savior, when they start attacking Him and trying to promote a false Jesus that was promoted... Um, Let's go back to Corinthians. They just were heading to trouble. No, they were already in trouble. For he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. The hymn there is talking about Satan. Where is Satan going to end up? and the lake of fire for all eternity. Where are you going to end up if you start believing in another Jesus and you receive another spirit and another gospel? The false gospel that this guy's trying to push. It's only belief. It's only belief. You're going to wind up in hell to burn for all eternity, which is where this guy's heading. Okay? Brothers and sisters in Christ, you've got people that start out with good words and fair speeches. They'll say things to try to get you to comment. And I commented and linked the gospel message. All right. There's nothing wrong with responding to some people, but when you find out that, hey, they don't trust the Word of God, that's a lie. I trust the Word of God when Jesus said, well, why don't you trust the Word of God when Jesus spoke through Paul and said that we had to have repentance, uh, preach uh, repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. When he commissioned the, the apostles, repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Where's that at? He doesn't trust the Word of God. He loves his sin. He's not gonna, he doesn't want to change life. He doesn't want God coming in and changing his life and fixing his life up. He loves it the way it is. That's the kind of people that you're going to deal with making comments in the comment section. Okay? And my biggest thing is here is how they say that getting saved through godly sorrow is great. And then down here he says it can lead to salvation. But once I showed him that I know scripture and I quoted the plan of salvation and said, hey, I ain't budging. It's not much that I know scripture. I don't know all of it. God's still revealing stuff to me. It's that I wouldn't budge on the scripture. This is my foundation. Comparing scripture with scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
all scripture, not just the pieces of scripture these people like to grab and say, that's it, that's all I'm using. All scripture, okay, is given. Um, then it comes down here, and then he just turns around and does a, a 180, or his true colors. <clears throat> I want to say his true colors. Give me a second. His true colors come out, what he really believes. He didn't believe any of this stuff that he just said up here. He lied. And that's what they do, brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what they do. I got a program up and running, so if you see me look over to the right, I'm looking at the program because it's new. Because uh, my old program is failing. It's not working. It's got bugs and stuff like that. That's why I haven't done a video like this in a while, in a long time. Um, but, brother, sister Christ, watch out for people like this Jimmy, 02468. Quote scripture after scripture after scripture with these people. Okay? But bottom line, when you realize they don't have a love of the truth, this guy doesn't have a love of the truth, he doesn't love God's word, he's double-minded, he's trying to use good words and fair speeches, at some point you've got to get to the point where it's just preach the gospel to them and let them be. Let them be. They be the blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. Okay? What's that ditch? Hell, in this context. Hell. Absolutely. Anybody who wants to follow him, go for it. I'm warning you, he's teaching a false gospel. He's trying to get you to receive another spirit, and he's preaching another Jesus. Even if you want to go by, he's preaching the Jesus that was preaching the kingdom of heaven. He's not preaching the Jesus that's saying, you have to believe in my death, burial, and resurrection. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confessing both in prayer. This dispensation. But all honesty, they believe in a totally different Jesus, a Jesus that is okay with sin. He tolerates sin. It's okay. As long as you believe, it's okay. I, I've repented. I've believed. I've confessed both in prayer. God is the one that saved me, and I still don't believe sin is okay, regardless of all that I did to follow the steps to find God's grace, and the, mainly what God did, saving me by his grace still doesn't justify any sin I do today. Not in one bit. But for these people, because of their faith alone, belief alone, it justifies all their sins. And they can continue living like the world, looking like the world, and acting like the world. But here's one thing that would have helped me. I just, he made his comment. I haven't done this in a while, but what I normally do when I see someone make a comment like this real quick, I go to their channel. Right? He's part of the F, F, I can't even say it, uh, International Faith. Anyway, Steve Anderson. He follows Steve Anderson because Steve Anderson doesn't follow the Word of God. He basically twists scriptures, ignores scriptures, and adds to scripture. He just, he follows this guy. When you find out, well, he's following somebody who's lost, he preaches a false gospel that the church has replaced the Jews, and the Bible doesn't teach that. All right. uh, the guy's lost. I should have just linked the gospel message to him, period. There's no point in talking to somebody about the Bible when you realize they're lost. All right. So this is just a warning to the brethren. I'll be abandoning this guy from the account, if I can remember how. Um, I really don't like doing that, but for the most part, we are getting to the last days. We see what's going on in this world. We, I'm, I don't know if we'll be here by the end of next year. Okay, the beginning of next year in America, they're going to be forcing all the uh, vaccines, and they're already destroying people uh, that are Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women by make, causing them to lose their jobs if they don't just fall in line and do what they're told. Um, and we have a lot of bad things. We can't tolerate people like this, especially in these last days. They come on here, and they try to confuse people, and they try to tear people away from the truth. You try talking to them, right? Bottom line, you can't go, you can't find salvation without going through godly sorrow, repentance, because that's what makes repentance work. True repentance is having godly sorrow, I'll say it again, for your personal sins that you've sinned against God. Not a general feeling of we're all sinners and I'll admit that my lost state and I admit that I'm a sinner. That's not true repentance. It's having godly sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against God. And a lot of us can say, yeah, I've been there. All right? You haven't been there? Uh, I'll be like Paul does. Check whether you be in the faith. If you've never come to God broken, 
It's not about getting super emotional, but having tears for sinning against him. Sorrow, that's what tears are, having godly sorrow for sinning against him. If you've never done that, uh, you need to check whether you be in the faith. You didn't repent. All right? So many of us have testimonies where we got to a point in our life that we fell down broken before the Lord and had godly sorrow for our personal sins that we sinned against God. We look at our life and say, our life is a mess. I'm a wicked sinner, Lord. I've sinned against you. And then that belief takes hold. It's not up here anymore. It's down here. We had that belief, 1 Corinthians, um, 2 Corinthians 15, uh, chapter, uh, verse 2, talks about believing in vain. It's up here. My belief was in vain for, for most of my life. I was a false convert. It's only when I came to true biblical repentance that belief took hold down here. Repentance happened down here. Belief happened down here. Confession comes out here. Confession, but where does it come from? Down here. What's down here is coming out here. Confession. Right? And then you ask God to save you. It's not difficult. The plan of salvation is so simple. But what's the number one reason? People won't get saved. Worldly sorrow. They love their sin. They love the world. The ways of the world is always fleshly. It's about the flesh. It's about sin. They don't want to give up that life. They love that life. They really don't see a problem with that life. That's the, oh, that's the number one reason and only reason people won't get saved. Right? So I'll end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.